Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, thank you for kind introduction and good afternoon, everyone, or morning or evening, depending on where you are. Uh, thank you for joining us here. Um, I think we already had a couple of very, very interesting presentations. So hopefully I can add a little bit uh, on the perspective, uh, you know, looking from the perspective of uh, chemical and digital solutions. So really um, today, uh, the goal is to share with you some of the latest advancements in the field of cement additives, uh, particularly for the use of reducing the carbon footprint of cement and concrete. Oh, I don't seem to be able to scroll. Okay, so I, if I use the mouse, it, it works. Um, okay, so let me, I, I will start with an introduction to the global CO2 issue and what it means to the construction industry, followed by an overview of what chemical and digital solutions uh, can do uh, in order to help with that issue. I will then introduce the newest technologies from GCP for uh, cement producers, the CO2 cost reducers platform and the GCP Dash additive intelligence. Uh, finally, I will conclude with a couple of uh, examples with uh, you know, real life uh, studies of uh, cement plants, customers of ours, which successfully introduced uh, these technologies and uh, spoiler alert, got uh, significant CO2 savings. Um, so before I get into the details um, of, uh, of the new technologies, let me very briefly introduce who we are. Uh, just in the rare event that we haven't crossed ways before. So the roots of GCP applied the technologies uh, date back to, um, to a company named uh, Dewey and Dalmi in, uh, that was found, founded actually in 1991 and that uh, in early 1930s invented the category of uh, cement additives and concrete admixtures. Um, and by the way, the story how that happened by a combination of, uh, of I would say, genius scientists and serendipities uh, is really interesting. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to cover that today. But, uh, you know, what is important really here is that, you know, since the introduction of, uh, of the first products uh, um, 90 years ago or over 90 years ago, um, first as Dewey and Almi, eventually acquired by Grace and then spinning off as a GCP, we've tried to continue on this path of uh, innovation, introducing a variety of technologies, uh, some of them are really creating new categories like uh, grinding aids, uh, water reducers, um, uh, strength enhancers, corrosion inhibitors, and so on, uh, reaching, uh, you know, in the, 2010, in, in the 2010s, uh, more modern solutions like such as Clarinas, Conceras, and uh, Verify in concrete transit management. And last but not least, uh, uh, what we are going to cover today, which is the CO2 cost reducers for cement and coming soon for concrete. So um, maybe the very first thing I would like to, to say about concrete is that it is likely to be uh, the most eco-friendly, versatile, low-cost, and durable construction material. If you, for example, compare it with glass and steel, the embodied carbon is uh, approximately 10 to 20 times lower. So the amount of CO2 that is really embedded into concrete per unit of mass is uh, uh, already pretty low. The issue comes with the global production, the volumes concerned of uh, concrete production. So according to uh, the latest estimation from GCCA, approximately 14 billion, ton, billion cubic meters, excuse me, of concrete are produced annually. And you know, with these huge numbers, I always try to contextualize. So I was just, if Google served me right, I was looking for the volume of uh, uh, the biggest Egyptian pyramid, the Giza pyramid, I think that's 2.6 million cubic meters. That means every year we produce concrete volumes equivalent to producing over 5,000 new pyramids every year. So that's why um, if you multiply even such a relatively small number, like 250 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter of, of concrete for such a huge volume every year, of course, we enter into something that really needs attention. And in our estimation, indeed, uh, concrete production accounts for over 6% of the total anthropogenic greenhouse gases, um, of which um, close to 5% is coming from the cement production alone. So clearly, the entire construction industry, concrete producers, and certainly cement producers are already undertaking very significant efforts to reduce their carbon footprint. A lot has been achieved already. 
still a lot needs to be done in order to get to very significant reductions and eventually to our vision of a net zero concrete by 2050. But the time for action is now. And as said, there are uh, still a few low hanging fruits that we can implement today. And then some uh, you know, innovative technologies, which I'm going to share with you in a second, that can probably uh, be the next step in order to, to deliver some more CO2 reductions. And uh, in this slide, I'm presenting a case study from uh, um, a cradle to grave analysis of, uh, of uh, uh, a concrete uh, uh, mix, uh, where you can see the breakdown of the sources of CO2. So typically, um, you would see that the main source of uh, CO2 clearly is uh, cement um, into, into concrete. And that is because uh, cement has uh, a component of CO2 coming from uh, uh, burning fuels. It also carries a component uh, coming from the, from the chemical reaction, you know, just decomposing calcium carbonate into calcium oxide and, uh, and uh, CO2. Um, as a byproduct in the clinkerization stage and then other sources like a grinding and all the rest. Um, we are going to focus on, on, on this part of cement today, but uh, we shall not forget that there are other areas that require attention. For example, I will mention uh, the other concrete raw materials, for example, the aggregates or concrete uh, transportation. And of course, GCP is trying to help uh, producing, addressing uh, CO2 uh, emissions also from the sources, for example, with the Clarena claim mitigating agents for the aggregates or for uh, the verify uh, concrete in transit management. But again, today we will focus on the blue color, the part here, which is really how we can help reduce the CO2 in concrete coming from cement. So uh, last high level um, numbers I have for today is uh, we tried to summarize in a, in, a, in a very simple visual way what it means uh, utilizing cement additives, concrete admixtures from a global perspective uh, with the, with the uh, you know, focus on CO2 emissions. But today we estimated that the typical uh, um, concrete mix could emit approximately as the median 250 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter. That's clearly just a median of, of a very broad range that could range typically between 100 and up to 600 and more kilograms per, of CO2 per cubic meter. But if you stay with me, let's take this as, uh, as a, a very typical uh, case study, if not the, the median average. Um, that's the emissions of a cubic meter of concrete. Now, if you multiply it for the 14 billion cubic meters I mentioned before, you immediately get to the emissions from concrete on an annual basis, which are approximately 3.5 billion tons per year. So that's a, a very significant uh, amount of uh, CO2 emissions. And you should uh, account for the fact that uh, that already accounts for, for the reduction of CO2 coming from uh, um, currently used uh, reference technologies, such as you know, the water reducers in concrete and the grinding aids in cement, which we believe in our estimations are already allowing the industry to reduce approximately 40 kilograms of CO2 per cubic meter of concrete or approximately 14% of the emissions. But what is really interesting here, and I don't know if you also see the, okay, maybe you can see the rightmost part of the slide now, um, is uh, what else can we do? You know, what more can we do? And in our estimations, we believe that uh, with the adoption of the latest uh, CO2 reducer technologies like the CO2 cost reducer from uh, GCP, uh, as well as IoT solutions like Verify and other technologies, it is possible uh, all else being equal to decrease uh, the emissions down to 180 from 250. So that would be a 38% reduction from the baseline of uh, 290. And also very importantly, it would mean a reduction of 1 billion ton of CO2 per year, which I would say it's, it's very significant. So hopefully these numbers uh, are creating a little bit of uh, appetite uh, for the technologies we are going to discuss uh, today uh, and give a sense of the potential very beneficial impact uh, for the environment and for the production of sustainable cement and concrete. So GCP is proud to introduce its latest range of uh, quality improvers and strength enhancers for cement 
uh, which are based on both new chemicals, new proprietary design process, and combinations of those. These are specifically developed to allow a significant reduction of uh, clinker and to offset uh, the negative impact coming from uh, uh, certain SEMs, supplementary cementitious materials, as well as from the downsides of adopting alternative fuels in place of previous fossil fuels. And it's, it's proven to be able to deliver up to 10% reduction in the specific carbon emissions from cement production, and therefore uh, you know, close to that number also from a perspective of uh, concrete. Now I'm just showing a first example here, which I'm, I'm pretty proud of and hopefully gives a sense of what we can aim for. Uh, so this is a, a, a CO2 cost reducer that was added during cement manufacturing, you know, dosed directly into the mill uh, like we normally do with grinding aids and quality improvers. That was eventually tested in concrete and since that, this specific customer was looking at results, particularly at one day uh, and low temperature, the tests were run at 24 hours and 10 degrees Celsius. So in this case, you can see that all, all the rest being equal, same water reducer, same mix design, same water to cement ratio, etc. cetera. Um, the strengths at one day at 10 degrees were increased from approximately 28 megapascals to 35 megapascals. So about 25% about higher strength or seven megapascals, again, at low temperature and, and one day, which is pretty remarkable, I believe. So how, how are these additives working? Um, first of all, uh, the very first thing to keep in mind is uh, these are typically uh, sort of catalyzers. So they um, augment the amount of uh, cement that is uh, reacted for a, a given period of time. Okay, so over time, more cement reacts, more reaction products are formed. And this is a well-known mechanism that was studied uh, since the days we, we first introduced the TIPA-based additives in uh, early 1990s. But uh, additionally, it's important to consider that uh, different chemicals act differently on different phases of uh, clinker and supplementary cementitious materials. So I'm, I'm showing here in the, in the central part of, of this slide, uh, just an example with the two chemicals. One uh, uh, represented by the, by the purple line, activating more the aluminate part and uh, you know, influencing more the aluminate to sulfate balance. Whereas the other, represented by the uh, dotted red line, was acting more on the silicate phase. Uh, but even more interestingly, as you can see here, the combination of the, of the two uh, chemicals resulting in, and sorry, the other, um, the other, the previous line with the, the second chemical is the, uh, is the blue line. The combination of the two is the uh, dotted uh, red curve. So as you can see from the dotted red curve, the, the um, sum of the effect of the two chemicals is not a simple sum. There's a synergistic effect that we can explore in order to develop uh, and, uh, and uh, implement uh, the most effective chemical combination and tailor-made solution for the individual needs. I would say the latest frontier though in, in understanding the mechanisms of chemicals and therefore bringing new chemicals and new combinations to, to, to the market uh, is understanding how this influence the morphology of the reaction products. And I'm, I'm showing here a case study from, uh, uh, from um, a very nice study uh, from cement and concrete research, which is particularly meaningful, uh, uh, particularly meaningful to me because uh, it's showing uh, a tremendously different uh, effect from enantiomers of the same chemical structure, showing a very different reaction products formed at both one hour and 120 hours uh, just by uh, means of a different spatial orientation. So there's a lot we are understanding with the earth in this area. I would name maybe uh, porosity as being a, a critical factor and you know, reduced porosity and well distributed can really deliver higher strengths. And this is where really the next frontier uh, is likely to be. Um, now, as you can imagine, um, the combination and the permutations between all these variables starts to be uh, um, you know, very significant and uh, it could explode rapidly. If you think of uh, all the cement variables, clinker variables, environmental variables, the additive, the chemicals, uh, you know, the permutations hugely ramp up. 
So uh, we've, uh, we've tried um, to look at that and came up with a solution, which we believe is uh, delivering good, good value to our customer, which is the GCP Dash Additive Intelligence. So GCP Dash is an app and a portal that is used in order to meet specific customer requirements, what we call the opportunity qualification into a valuable solution, which is uh, come, uh, happening as a real-time product selection that is matching the needs with the output uh, thanks to the use of uh, proprietary algorithms that we have developed over, I would say, up to 90 years of experience in testing chemicals in cement. And I will show you again an example of how combining the new chemicals and the design uh, process, it is possible to come up with solutions which are uh, I hope uh, very uh, compelling. So the first case study is about a CO2 cost reducer that uh, uh, was able to offset the negative impact of replacing clinker with the supplementary cementitious materials. And again, spoiler alert, the bottom line is it was possible to reduce the carbon footprint of this cement from 680 kilograms of CO2 per ton of cement down to 620, or everything else being equal, a reduction of 9% of CO2 emissions. So in this case, um, the cement plant was uh, trying to replace the existing cement uh, one with a cement uh, two AP with natural porcelain and limestone which uh, uh, would, of course, you know, if no other change was made, uh, uh, would have some, uh, uh, some uh, detrimental effect to the strengths and other performances of cement. So the, the plant was really looking for, for a supplier able uh, uh, to partner with them in the development of this uh, cement, eventually to be marketed with the same characteristics and performances of the cement one. So um, GCP first ran laboratory tests, according to which it was possible to uh, develop a series of formulation with the best candidate that was enhancing significantly the degree of hydration of both the aluminate and silicate phases, as you can see on the rightmost uh, um, graphs here, both on, the, both on the instantaneous graph and the cumulative one, where the blue line is the blank cement with no chemical, the gray line is, uh, the, is the cement with the reference quality improver that the plant was already using when the study was run. And the yellow line represents the new CO2 cost reducer technology. So following the, laboratory's exam, um, the laboratory tests, it was possible to move to a first short field trial, still with the previous uh, uh, type of cement, the, the, the ordinary Portland cement. Um, and it was possible to show that the CO2 cost reducer delivered uh, over six megapascals on top of current additive. So not on top of uh, the blank cement, but really six megapascals over the existing quality improver, which was already delivering a good performance at 28 days. So that was enough for the plant to run, for the, plant to run uh, the long trials uh, with the cement 2AP. And eventually, as you can see from the bottom table, it was possible to achieve uh, an average strength, uh, which was well between uh, the uh, boundaries of, uh, you know, the variability of a previous cement, and particularly at 28 day, likely on the higher end of the range. So again, Switching from cement one to cement two AP, 9% lower CO2 emissions, same cement quality. So something that hopefully uh, we are seeing more and more as the demand and the, from the market is pulling for these new types of cement. And along the same lines, um, um, I have a second case study now with this a new cement two C, which you know are, uh, are were recently introduced uh, um, in Europe um, last, last year or so. And uh, in this case, uh, also a 9% uh, incidentally same percentage of CO2 reduction. But in this case, starting from already um, a remarkably low um, specific CO2 emissions, uh, around 530 kilograms per ton of cement. And it was possible to decrease it uh, even, uh, even farther down to 408 kilograms per ton of cement which is uh, a very low carbon footprint uh, uh, compared to industry uh, standards. So in this case, the, the goal of the plant was to switch from current cement to BMSL, uh, 
meaning the four with as lime and limestone, uh, 42.5N to a new type of cement 2C SL with the same class, strength class. Uh, and of course, whilst maintaining the same cement uh, quality, uh, whilst adding uh, more limestone. And in this case, I have to say uh, it's possibly one of the best uh, case studies I've seen. The CO2 cost reducer was able to increase the two day strength over the blank cement by eight megapascals and the 28 day strength over the blank cement by 12 megapascals. So in this case, the reference is not a treated cement to the current quality improver, it's a blank cement, but I'll say it again, eight megapascals at two days, 12 megapascals at 28 days. In this case, it was therefore possible for the plant to switch to the cement to CSL, maintaining the strength uh, uh, targets whilst reducing the clinker from 65% to 59%, which is of course what drove uh, the reduction of CO2 emissions from 530 down to 480 kilograms of CO2, which on an annualized basis, uh, multiplied by the volumes produced of this type of cement, savings of uh, approximately 10,000 tons of CO2 per year. Uh, one last word about uh, this uh, case study. Um, if you stay with me on this uh, uh, bottom right chart, uh, I think it's quite remarkable to observe the linearity of uh, the um, correlation between the dosage and the performance. So it was possible to, and you know, this is just replotting a bit of the data on the, of the table on the left. So what is it, uh, what it uh, really means is uh, it was possible by designing this customized additive to adjust the dosage of the additive in order to get a higher or lower strength contribution both at early and late ages, so that it was possible for the customer to adjust the dosage of the additive in order to uh, manage the variability of other variables. For example, uh, uh, variability in the quality of the incoming slag, or maybe adjusting the level of limestone, or maybe adjusting for the quality of a clinker, depending on alternative fuels, or maybe, you know, uh, aged, aged clinker and so on. So again, as you see, this is really resulting from uh, the design process as well as uh, from uh, the new chemistries uh, in order to achieve something that is, uh, can be custom made and really can be adjusted to fit the specific requirements, even on a day-to-day -day basis by adjusting the dosage. Okay, so hopefully that was uh, good enough to give you a, a sense of uh, this new technology, we, we are really proud of that. We really believe it's going to be an important lever in the hands of cement producers uh, to reduce the specific carbon footprint wherever the baseline is. You know, I was showing a couple of case studies which were starting already from a relatively low uh, CO2 emission level, particularly the second one, I'd say. Uh, so it's uh, the bottom line there is really that wherever you are, it's likely that uh, uh, there's a still a little bit space for, for a little bit more CO2 reductions whilst maintaining uh, the cement performance. So all in all, together with our customers, GCP believes that protecting people and planet is good for businesses. Our customers last year in our estimations already reduced 23 million tons of CO2 thanks to the use of cement additives and concrete admixtures of GCP. And overall, we believe we can help our customer reduce over 30% of their CO2 emissions. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have uh, uh, specific inquiries, just let me know. You have my email address here and I'll be around for the next few minutes if you have any uh, question now. Thank you.